This is it everybody, this is the ultimate review between Battlefield 3 and Modern Warfare 3. And I'm going to be giving you the ultimate verdict as to which game is the better buy. Is it Battlefield 3, a game that claims to have great graphics, great multiplayer, and a stunning campaign? Or is it Modern Warfare 3 that is delivering on an experience we've seen before, but claims to have new innovations that will make it amazing? Well, we're here to find out. Before I start, I, all I want to say is that if you have an opinion, I'll accept it. But if you have trolling, hateful bullshit, I'm not accepting it. Simple as that. No need to go into it. No need to go into any more detail. Gotcha. Okay, Battlefield 3. Let's start because I know this video is probably going to be 100 hours long, and I want to get to the point. So, Battlefield 3. Let's start because I did that game first. So. Uh, oh. Okay, let's try not to burp. Anyways, Battlefield 3. <laughs> the campaign of Battlefield 3. We'll start with that first. What were some good things about the campaign? Because obviously there was the campaign, the co-op, and the multiplayer. And if you're gonna buy this um if you're gonna buy this game or Modern Warfare 3, you're gonna have to have a reason for buying these games. Or maybe you don't have much money and you can only buy one game. And you're like, gee, which game is the better buy? Again, this in, this review will cover that and basically tell you the game that is worth your money. Okay? So Battlefield 3. The campaign. It's generally the typical length of a campaign. It's five to six hours. You could probably beat it in four hours if you're really good at Battlefield. But I'd say the campaign is a pretty enjoyable experience. Um, it's really immersive, I'd say, in terms of, you know, the graphics that capture you, the real-life military aspect that they tried to go for. There were some cool stages as well. There was the jet, there was the jet um, fighter pilot stage thingy-majiggy, I don't know what you want to call it, but it was the stage where you're in the fighter and you're shooting things and you're shooting other fighters in the air and it's like air combat and it's like Star Fox shit blowing up and it was pretty cool and the other stage was the tank stage where you have to shoot a whole bunch of Iranian tanks and you play as a different marine and it's pretty cool. Now the story as a whole is basically like Call of Duty Black Ops where almost the entire game is a flashback and the end of the game is in the present. The flashback aspect is, is you know, we've seen it before, nothing new, pretty cool though. There are some, you know, conspiracies with Russians, obviously. We've heard that a hundred times before. But overall, I'd say the campaign is pretty good. Nothing you're going to buy the game for, okay? You're not going to buy this game for campaign, all right? Because the campaign's really not that good. It's okay, but at the end of the day, you're like, nah, I see a C. Wasn't that good. I see a C. I see a C the campaign. <laughs> campaign's not really great, my take on that, okay? Co-op. Co-op is six maps, and you can do them with one other person over Xbox Live or PlayStation or PC, all the three consoles that both this game and Modern Warfare 3 are, are available for. I was only able to do five missions with my friend the Reaper, and that is because the fifth mission was a pain in the balls. It was pretty much the hardest thing ever. Now, it wasn't the hardest thing ever, it was just, it was hard. I mean... I can't remember what it was. It was like taking down hostages or some bullshit like that. I forget. But yeah, you're supposed to do something like that. But the co-op, it varies. There's one stage where you got to pilot a helicopter. There's one stage where you got to hold a front line from all these Iranian sol or was I saying wait? Yeah, Iranian soldiers invading. I was trying to say. I'm like, am I thinking of a different country? I'm not. But anyways, so the co-op is expansive. It's pretty cool. You get to do some cool things. But again. Are you going to buy the game for the co-op? No. No. You're not going to buy the game for the co-op. Co-op is okay, but just like the campaign, it kind of sucks. Only six missions. Once you beat them on the hardest difficulty, or, I mean, if you eventually get to the hardest difficulty, but once you beat them on regular, you'll, you're, you know, you, you'll be like, meh, it was okay, but you're really not going to go back to it unless you want to beat it on the hardest mode. But... I don't really care to do that, and I'm sure most people won't, so you're not really going to invest much time into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now, you're probably like, well, I guess this game sucks then, since those two modes are horrible. Well, the last 
thing is the multiplayer. And multiplayer is pretty much what this company went for when they made this game. They're like, alright, we know Call of Duty is the same bullshit every single year, and we want to come out with an experience that's unique and immersive and captures the player and makes them want to play our multiplayer more than any other game that comes out in 2011. Really, for the campaign of this, or not the campaign, the multiplayer, for the multiplayer, for the multiplayer of this game, you could look at it from a, um, a couple of, of um, various angles. You could say, okay, this game is really cool for the multiplayer because of the squad-based aspect, because of the vehicles that you get to drive, because of the destructible environments, because of the teamwork and communication and all those things that you get to do and say, alright, I want to push up the front line and oh, I want to bring them back and I want to shoot those buildings and blow them up so now they have no cover, I want to capture that objective and I want to lure them off with this helicopter in the sky. All those things you can do because number one, the maps are huge. They put a lot of time into making the maps very, very big. There are different ways you can come into the maps. You can, you know, paratroop in, you can you know, just rush, you can use a tank, helicopter, all sorts of different things you can do to enter the map in a really cool way. Now, as great as that all is, there are two major flaws with this multiplayer, I'd have to say. If you're going to buy this multiplayer, or if you're going to buy the game for the multiplayer, because let's face it, you're not going to buy Battlefield 3 for the campaign and co-op. You're just not. You're going to buy it for multiplayer. And the multiplayer of this game is pretty good in what I just said. Great squad-based combat, as long as you have friends that are willing to play with you. If you're playing with random people, you're pretty much fucked. But if you have friends, it's more of a, you know, immersive, immersive experience. The vehicles, great graphics for the most part, and the whole package. It's pretty good. But, again, two major flaws. Number one, oh shit, it's fucking, something just fell over here anyways. Number one, the learning curve on this game is kind of up in the air, if you know what I mean, okay? It's, how should I word this? I think... If you're going to play this game, you need to know what you're getting yourself into, okay? This is not Call of Duty where you can just pick up the controller, run and gun, get a couple of kills, maybe get some kill streaks, and have a fun time. This is a game you need to spend time with. You need to spend hours, days with. You need to invest time into the multiplayer, especially with piloting some of the vehicles. The helicopter comes to mind. The helicopter, the first time I got into it, I crashed it. Second time, crash. Third, crash. Fourth, crash. I kept crashing it. I'm like, how do you fly this thing? I didn't figure it out, and that's probably because when I did the co-op stage with the helicopter stage, I did not fly it. I was the person in the machine gunner. So, unfortunately, I missed out on flying the helicopter and maybe getting some experience on how to fly it. But, again, even if I had taken that chance to fly it, it still takes practice. It's a hard freaking vehicle to fly. Like, I'm thinking of Grand Theft Auto 4, when I'm flying a helicopter, it's not nearly as hard as the one in this game. It's just ridiculous in how you should fly that. And, you know, the jet fighter really isn't that hard to fly. You do, you know, you, you do strafe runs and flips in the air, and for the most part, it's pretty easy to pilot the jet. Same thing with the tank, pretty straightforward. You know, the jeeps, it's straightforward. It's a vehicle, it's a land vehicle. It's not going to be that hard to pilot. But especially with... The helicopter, it's kind of annoying with that learning curve. And in general, with the combat, because a lot of the guns have insane recoil, and you're going to be kicking yourself, and you're going to be like, damn it, why didn't I, you know, shoot that guy there, and this guy flanked me, and I die so quickly, and I don't understand why I'm dying so much. I take, I take like, two bullets, and I'm dead. Again, what they tried to do with this game is they tried to make it as realistic as possible. You know, the sun glaring in your face, the sweat on your face, the, the gunshots literally piercing your skin and you dying in two hits, the, the sound effects, you know, going out when a tank shoots a missile, all that kind of stuff they want to 
throw into the game so that you really feel like you're playing a real military shooter and that you feel like you're on the battlefield with your friends. And that's why the game's called Battlefield. That's why it's called Battlefield. Literally, you're on the battlefield, you feel the immersive experience of shooting and being with your teammates. Now, that's all good, but one thing that screws that experience up of being on literally the battlefield, and that is the game bugs. <laughs> the game bugs, and this is probably the most unique aspect to my review, because I know a lot of people are reviewing this game, and, you know, a lot of people know that there's lots of competition between these two games, and they're reviewing it, and this is probably the most unique aspect, because I don't think this has happened to a lot of people. For whatever reason, maybe it has, I don't know. The game bugs. You saw almost every single freaking time when I loaded the game to do a session of Battlefield 3 multiplayer, there would be game bugs. For instance, hmm. I'm running and I trip on nothing. My guy is flying all over the map for no reason. The graphics keep glitching in and out. The sun is glaring in and out like a flashlight. The character no longer has a gun, so I can't fire anymore and I'm stuck. Or, the worst one of all, the EA server goes out and I can't play multiplayer at all. All of this stuff happened, yes. Every single thing that I just named happened to me when I was playing this multiplayer. And if you don't believe me, go check out my footage, which is on my channel in a playlist. It happened to me. The game bugs. The graphics. My guy having no gun, so I was forced to leave the game. I was forced to leave a game because my guy had no weapon and I couldn't fight at all. I could only move my character. Ridiculous. Ridiculous that the presentation of this game was in the shitter. And that's something that can be said about this game. The presentation is awful. The campaign, not that great. The presentation of the campaign sucks. The co-op, okay, but there are only six missions. That presentation sucks. The multiplayer, yeah, sure, it's fun, but how can you have fun when there are game bugs every three seconds? And that's why the presentation of the multiplayer, ultimately, I'd say overall, is Okay, but I've said many times that it sucks when your guy can't fight and you're forced to leave or the servers just go out and you can't fight. It's stupid, annoying, and I don't and I don't I wouldn't want to deal with it if I hadn't played this game before and I was checking it out for the first time. I'd be bullshit. I'd be like, what the hell is this? Now, that doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes it does. And some people have said, well, it's your server, you have to switch from Europe to North America if you live in North America. Or maybe it's because you're on the 360 and the game is, you know, has the greatest graphics on the PC or the PlayStation 3, and I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not going to buy the game for the PlayStation 3. I don't have a computer that can support Battlefield, so that's not an option. So I have the game for the 360. It should work for the 360, okay? They have the option to buy the game for, for the 360, so I should be able to pick up the, the 360 controller and play the game without any problems. And, I don't know, maybe it's Microsoft's fault because their Xbox Live is shitty, or maybe it's the company's fault for not programming the game properly. Again, the presentation sucks balls. Okay? And that's the problem with Battlefield 3. So... I'm going to give a score for this game right now, so that way, when I'm done with Modern Warfare 3, I can just say which game was better. And, again, the score is not going to tell the game. So let's say Modern Warfare 3 gets a higher score, okay? That does not mean that Modern Warfare 3 wins, that just means that it has a higher score. That doesn't mean the game wins, though, okay? I'm just going to say that. But, for this game, Battlefield 3, I'd say that this game, ultimately... It deserves an 8.5, okay? It does not deserve a 9 because the presentation is not that good, okay? The campaign's not that good. The co-op's not that good. The multiplayer is very fun once you learn how to play it, but it can sometimes be hindered by the stupid game bugs that repeatedly show up constantly. With me, it was constant. And if you have a 360, you're at potential risk for shit like that happening. And it's... it's it's sad. It's sad that a player like me was having fun, was getting kills, 
and then his experience is ruined by stupid game bugs, okay? So this game gets an 8.5, all right? So let's move on to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and then we'll say which game is better, okay? So Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, the campaign, picks up right after Modern Warfare 2, and... You know, you got your typical explosions, epic set pieces, you have the characters Soap and Price and Makarov returning, and you have the story ultimately concluding. So, so the story started in 2007, and now in, to, in 2011 we have the story of Modern Warfare finally concluding. So, and I have to say the ending was pretty good. Some plot holes, however, were not filled for me personally. One of them was... Whatever happened to Sergeant Foley and Ramirez? Those were two main characters from Modern Warfare 2 that you played with a lot, and they're just left to stand on the top of the White House after they defeat the Russians in Washington, D.C., and they're like, oh, we're going to go to Moscow and burn it to the ground. Well, that never happened. That never happened. You never get to see the U.S. Army Rangers again. You go to Frost and Sandman, which, you know, they're, they're cool characters, but we've never heard of them. This is their new characters to the Modern Warfare series, whereas it would have been cool to showcase Sergeant Foley, who I thought was a pretty fun character from Modern Warfare 2, personally, okay? And so the campaign is about five hours, you know, five to six hours. You could probably beat it in four hours if you're really good at Call of Duty, and I know a lot of people are. And pretty much the same length as Battlefield 3. Campaign, I'd say I liked more than Battlefield 3 just because of the set pieces, some of the things you're doing. like what, they, have, they do have new things. They have the drones, which was pretty cool, where you're, you have like a drone with like a machine gun and grenade launchers, and that was pretty cool. And you have, you know, some cool fights in some major cities like Paris, Germany, Britain. And obviously it's a far-fetched story. It kind of gets ridiculous, like Russia will take all of Europe. Well, Honestly, that's kind of stupid. Like, Modern Warfare 1 was kind of realistic in terms of its story. Modern Warfare 2, eh, kind of got ridiculous with Russia invading America. Now it just kind of got stupid. Like, really? Russia chemically attacking Europe so it can take it over? It's like, it's like, alright, where did all these Russian soldiers come from? Like, seriously, how many guys can you possibly have to take over all of Europe? So, kind of gets ridiculous, but... I'd say it's a good fiction story, because obviously none of these games have real stories. So, the game's good, pretty decent campaign, but again, it does not rank up to Arkham City and Human Revolution, just like Battlefield 3. Now, the co-op. The co-op is two modes. You have Special Ops, and you also have Survival Mode. And the Ops are basically just the regular... Um, missions from Modern Warfare 2, and those missions are, I think, it, how many missions are there? I think there are 16 missions, and you do different things. I mean, one mission you might be a juggernaut, one mission you might be controlling a machine gun turret, one mission you might be in an AC-130, one mission you might have to, you know, shoot a whole bunch of Russians in New York. All the set pieces are taken from the campaign, so you're familiar with the locations, so it's not like a brand new spot, like, oh, I've never been here before. So for the most part, the, the ops mode, or whatever you want to call it, is taken from the campaign. And they're pretty fun. You can do regular hard or veteran, so you can do different modes. And you get more stars, you get achievements, and stuff like that. You can only play with one friend. Same thing for survival, which I kind of thought was stupid. I mean, come on. I mean, Black Ops Zombies, the... The greatest part about that was that you could play with four people, and it was really fun. I played, you know, all my zombie maps in 2011, and it was fun to play them with four people. You know, I only did four people for Resurrection, but I only did two people with my friend the Reaper. But you could tell how hard it was with two people. And it is kind of hard for survival in um, the ops mode, but not insanely hard. So maybe that's why there's not four people, but... Regardless, they're fun. They're fun to play, and the survival mode is, is the probably the only new thing that's being added to the Modern Warfare or Call of Duty series. And survival mode is just like Gears of War and Halo, where you're, fa you're, you're facing off against hundreds and hundreds of people rushing you, and there's juggernauts and attack dogs and guys with body armor, and it's, it's fun. You get to unlock stuff, you get to purchase weapons and kill streaks and 
armor and quick revive and perks and all sorts of cool stuff and you can you can rank up so you have two ranks you have your multiplayer rank and you have your your survival ops whatever the fuck you want to call it rank so it's cool you're basically simultaneously working on two different ranks and you're like wow it's kind of rewarding to have experience for this thing and experience for this thing over here and I can have fun in two ways so that's a pretty cool aspect about Modern Warfare 3 I thought playing survival and since you play all of the survival maps on the multiplayer maps it's really fun because you can kind of just do them all together all right so basically the last part we have to review would probably be the multiplayer and the multiplayer it's I'd say it's the same thing all right I'm not gonna beat a dead horse it's the same thing okay it's Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 1 combined, okay? You have kill streaks coming back, but they're different. They're the strike packages. They're different packages where you can support your team or you can run and gun solo if you want to unlock the MOAB, which is the new tactical nuke, which doesn't end the game. You could get, you know, a juggernaut with a riot shield. There's a whole bunch of different stuff. Cool kill streaks, cool new weapons that they've added, although some of the weapons are kind of similar to other weapons we've used before. But... Overall, I'd say it was it was pretty fun playing the multiplayer, but again, same problems. Host migration. Infinity Ward not being dedicated to its servers, just like it wasn't for Modern Warfare 2 when the company broke up. And overpowered guns. They're still quickscoping, which is insanely freaking annoying. UMP, overpowered gun. Now they did... One thing they did right was tone down the explosive damage, but they toned it down so much that explosives don't do any damage. Like, I'll throw a Semtex grenade, it'll explode, and it'll barely hurt the guy, and he'll just keep walking and be perfectly fine. And this is something that I've always hated about Call of Duty, how everyone's a freaking Terminator, and they take, like, no shots. Now, I guess you could say, oh, I guess you could do hardcore mode, and... Yeah, I guess you could do hardcore mode, but again, shouldn't have to do that, should probably have to do the regular modes, okay? Now, in terms of multiplayer and the new modes, there's only like two new modes. There's Kill Confirmed, I think there's like Team Defender where you have to hold the flag, and Team Defender is kind of similar to Oddball and Halo where you have to hold the ball and you get points for it, and it's pretty fun because it centralizes everybody around the dog tags and the, the flag, and it's kind of hectic and it kind of gets fun, so those are two game modes, that's pretty fun. But in terms of glitches and servers and stuff that I hated in uh, Battlefield 3, they don't come up as much, but as you saw in my footage, lots of host migration bullshit, lots of servers just dropping for no reason and people just, you know, popping in and out, and it kind of gets stupid. But I can understand why that happens to an extent. I do think that Sledgehammer and Infinity Ward should fix their freaking servers, but... Again, what are you going to do? So, I'm running out of time, 23 minutes. i got to give my verdict. What game is better? Battlefield 3 or Mono Warfare 3? <sighs> I don't know. It depends. Well, actually, I do know. I'm going to say the winner. The winner of my multiplayer face-off is Call of Battlefield, Modern Battlefield 3. Yeah, that's right. I combined it both games. No, all right, never mind. I tried to do that for fun, all right? The real winner is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, all right? I'm being serious now, okay? The reason is, is because Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is a naturally fun game, okay? You're not going to have these insane, stupid server bugs that I've been having up and down in Battlefield. You're going to have a solid campaign that runs, you know, approximately the same time, but it's not nearly as, you know insane as the other campaign, and the co-op offers more modes. There's 16 modes for special ops, and there's survival mode for every multiplayer map. That's insanely over, like, over what Battlefield 3 did, and they only have six maps. So, I, it's, it's obvious, it's obvious which game is the better buy. Modern Warfare 3 is the better buy. So what... Actually, what score would I give Modern Warfare 3, okay? Considering everything, I think I'd have to give Modern Warfare 3 a 9, a solid 9 out of 10. And the only reason it doesn't go higher 
is because it did not hit anything else. It's still the same Call of Duty experience. It's still the same bullshit we've been playing for years and years. They didn't do much innovation except survival mode, a couple of new game modes, and some new multiplayer kill streaks. And that's really it. They really didn't do anything else but that, okay? And that's, you know, it's kind of sad that that's really the only thing that's, you know, new, a couple of game modes and stuff, but again, it's fun. And you know how I review my games. I review them on the fun factor. And I'm going to tell you, Battlefield 3, I wasn't having fun because of the game bugs and because of the steep freaking learning curve. Modern Warfare 3, I was having fun because there weren't nearly as many game bugs. There were lots of modes, lots of things to do, lots of weapons, and lots of different things you could do, despite the fact that it was the same ex experience, it still felt new to me in a clear sense, okay? And I know I respect EA and the whole team that worked on this game for trying to do something new, for trying to take down Call of Duty. I do think it was wrong to attack Call of Duty, but I do understand what they were doing. They did a good job. It was good that they tried to t um, um, tackle a franchise that's so large, but ultimately, I think that this game, you know, it does not hit as much as Modern Warfare 3, but it's a good game. I'd suggest taking a look at it. It is more squad-based, so know what you're getting yourself into if you buy it. It ha might have some game bugs if you do buy it as well for the 360. Don't know about the other systems, but do know what you're getting yourself into. This game is not as easy to do run and gun. But Modern Warfare 3 wins the, wins the, um award, I guess, for the best first-person shooter of 2011. There really aren't any more first-person shooters, so this game wins the award for best first-person shooter of 2011. It won't get Game of the Year, because neither one of these games are contenders. They're not good enough. They do not live up to Arkham City and Human Revolutions. Like, those games are just... Those games blew me away. These games, not as much. Kind of did, but not really. So, I applaud EA for doing a really good job. And just to tell you, in terms of sales, Modern Warfare 3 has sold 6 million copies. It has officially broken a record for most games sold. It's insane. And this game has only sold, like, under 2 million. So Modern Warfare 3 has already beaten them in sales. So they jumped the gun by saying they were going to beat Call of Duty. And now look what happened. Modern Warfare 3 has sold 6 million games, and this game's only sold about 2 million. So... Obviously, it's clear by the numbers which game is better, it's clear by the content which game is better, but you could always buy this game if you wanted to. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy this game. Do not misunderstand what I'm saying. Buy this game if you want to, if, you're, if you like the franchise, if you want something different from Call of Duty. I can understand if, something, if a fan wants, or not a fan, a typical person would want something different than Call of Duty, because Call of Duty is kind of getting stale, okay? So that's my opinion, that's my verdict. Again, don't go crazy by flaming my videos if I say something that you didn't like. And I'm probably going to have to end this video or it might end on its own. So that's it. Those are my two reviews. Modern Warfare 3 gets a 9. Battlefield 3 gets an 8.5. Modern Warfare 3 wins because of its fun factor. I think Battlefield 3 is still a fun game. I think you still should still check it out. It's still worth a buy in my opinion. But it does not live up to Call of Duty's what they did this year, it may have been repetitive, but this game is still fun, still offers some new things, but because of the game bugs, the repetitiveness, and the learning curve, it just didn't beat Modern Warfare, okay? So I'm in 28 minutes, this is the longest video I've ever done, and I knew it was going to be long, so I'll see you guys later, thanks for tuning in, and stay tuned for four releases next week, it's going to be pretty crazy.